Hello and welcome to class number 8 of the UPSC Mains Answer Writing Initiative. I am so 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 happy to see a lot of you watching this and trying to write your answers. Some of you are writing the answers for the first time ever which is a great beginning because if you don't begin you will never be able to reach your destination. So it doesn't matter how bad your answers are, it doesn't matter if they are great, if they are average but you have to have to have to start writing and this initiative tries to bring out the writer in you. Again, if you want the lectures PDF, you can join the Telegram group. The link is in the description of the video. What do we do here? We try and decode a previous year question by the UPSCC, how to write answers. And at the end, I also give you a homework to see if you can apply your own mind and write your answers. I also am open to giving feedback to all your answers. A lot of you have been sending your answers to me on the email. A lot of you can also send these as well. Let's see what is that we have in store for you today. Again, once again, a reminder in the very first class of this series, I discuss about the entire structure of the answer, how to write the conclusion, how to write the introduction, the main body, how to distribute your words, what to include, what not to include. I talked about every single thing in detail. Again, this was in class number one of this series. How to find that? Go to description of this video. There's a link of the playlist. Click on that. The very first video of the playlist is class number one. In the initial 10 to 15 minutes, we talk about how to structure an answer. Once you are done with that, you can come back and then we will decode this question for you. So today I have taken up a question again from 2023 from GS paper number two. The question is the crucial aspects of development process has been the inadequate attention paid to human resource development in India, such as the measures that can address this inadequacy. Now there is one more thing that you can do if you want to. One other way in which you can take advantage of this class is when I come to the question, pause here, take your pen, pencil, paper, whatever you have, give yourself 10, 20 minutes and write your own answer. Don't go further. Just see the question. See if you're able to answer this, write your answer and then match up with the answer that I'm giving here so that you can see were you thinking on the same lines, evaluate yourself, see were you able to ideate in a similar manner or not. That can also be a good way forward for you to see when you are put in the spot in the examination, do you actually have that talent to come up with an answer? Because what is happening here, when I give you a homework right now, you know that this is the question. You might start writing the answer after some hours. So you are giving yourself 10 hours, 5 hours, 2 hours to think about that question. In the examination hall, you will not get that time. In the examination hall, the question will be in front of you. You have to read it. Think for 30 seconds and start writing. So maybe you can challenge yourself by two things. Number one, when I show this question to you, pause this video, write the answer. And also the homework question. As soon as you look at the homework question, right there and there, pause the video. Take your pen and paper, write an answer to this and see if you are able to evaluate yourself. Because if you write an answer after five, six hours, you're giving yourself a lot more time, which is not something that you will find in the examination. Anyway, let's come back. So the question here is that government of India is not paying attention to human resource development and how are we addressing this? So basically the idea is that the youth in India, they do not have the kind of skill set. They do not have the kind of education, the training that is required for our development. It says that the government is not putting a lot of pressure into that or putting a lot of effort into that. Suggest measures, how can we improve that? So let's ideate for a minute. You keep on hearing these headlines in the newspaper that Indians who are even engineering graduates or MBA graduates constantly applying for very, very low level jobs, jobs where eligibility criteria is just 10th pass or 8th pass. We see BTECs or postgraduates also applying for those jobs. You constantly see news articles that our skill labor is not as skilled and the companies would have to spend a lot of money in upskilling them once again. They are not eligible for jobs because the technical skills that they have gained is of no use. We also read about how the government of India's expenditure in skill development is very low. So those are the problems. So you know about those problems. Now, when the question is about problem and solution part, the easiest way to write the solution is right opposite to the problem. For example, you know that the problem is that the government is not spending a lot of money in R&D. So R&D expenditure is low. So what is your solution? The solution will be to increase R&D expenditure. 
if the problem for example is that there is lack of focus on skill development so skill based training is lacking then solution can be focus on skill based training so in these kind of questions if you know the problem solution part is very easy just write the opposite to it if you look here in the question they are not specifically asking you about the problem they are only asking you about the solution just like in some question upsc only ask you about the problem but we write solution from our own mind just to complete the answer similarly here also although they are only asking us about the measures or the solutions but we will here have to write certain points about the problem also so that the answer is much more holistic the answer is complete so what we will do is we will first introduce the problem then in the main body we will write about why the problem exists in india lack of expenditure lack of focus on vocational training lack of uh, skill development etc and then the solution part what can be done that will be the opposite of it and that will be your answer so let's start with the introduction part again here a good introduction would be something which would have certain facts first example is this where you can talk about how india is at a stage of demographic dividend which will peak around 2036 but in order to harness that we have to focus on human development so either you can have this fact if you don't remember that if you have been reading the reports such as a human development index then you can quote something from there how india's rank is dismal but for both of these you need to have certain facts with you if you don't have these facts what do you do it's very obvious that if you don't have these facts you still have to write an introduction so what do you do if you don't remember the facts then you have to make up a generic introduction which will be something like this so if i am the examiner i will give the least preference to this the third one not saying that i will not give it marks but i'll give the least preference to this because in the third one what did you do you just gave definition of development now i don't want you to define what is development you are becoming an ias officer you are mature enough to know what is development i also know that it's not a technical word but it is an option only in case when you don't remember any fact regarding this that is why reading reports indices having a grasp on the data it's extremely important to write answers in gs2 and gs3 because these two papers gs2 and gs3 are very 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 fact and number heavy so if you don't have that with you you will not get a lot of good marks so again if we have this data great that will be an impressive introduction if we don't we'll go with a generic one but avoid this usually so what you can do is right now for practicing purposes do make a note of something like this of the reports that are coming out now in the main body as i said although the question is not asking us about problem but we will define the problem in short detail and then we'll go to the solution part problems as we discuss shortage of skills insufficient investment inadequate policy focus education disparity the quality of education that is given in different parts of india is very different a person who has let's say passed out of class 10th or 12th from a very good school will be at a very different level as compared to someone who passed out from the same class but from a different school so just because there are two students who are both 12th pass doesn't mean that they will be at an equal level similar is the case with colleges as well a btech graduate let's say from iit kanpur would do not be the same as a btech graduate from some other engineering college where the syllabus was not evolving where there was no focus on research so there is educational disparity apart from quality of education there is also disparity between rural urban male female divide shortage of skills etc as i gave you here also if you can quote one or two numbers it would be great especially numbers about india's spend on r&d that's an important number do remember this india spends a very 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 low amount of our gdp as a proportion on the r&d so this is the problem part again the question did not specifically ask you about the problem they asked you about the solution but we wrote about the problem to give it a much more holistic view and if you just write opposite to it it will become the solution so if you know the problem solution writing of solution not that difficult the problem was lack of skills so solution is skill development problem was lack of innovation and research solution is to have more innovation and research so it's just the opposite here you can give example of some government schemes if you remember 
लाइक प्रधानमंत्री कौशल विकास योजना टू प्रोवाइड स्किल डेवलपमेंट कोर्सेज यू कैन गिव एग्जाम्पल द वॉट इसरो इज डूइंग इसरो हैज फॉर एग्जाम्पल इस्टेब्लिश द नेशनल रिसर्च फाउंडेशन सो द सोल्यूशन पार्ट इज समथिंग दैट द गवर्नमेंट कैन डू एंड समथिंग दैट द गवर्नमेंट हैज बीन डूइंग focus on gender equality because again the problem part was rural urban divide male female divide so in solution part we wrote the opposite of it we wrote gender equality focus on health and well being also teachers training is important so that the teachers also irrespective of whichever school or college they are teaching in should be able to harness as much technology as possible and pass it on to the student so writing of solution again is not difficult Write the opposite of the problem with one or two examples, and you should be good to go. One of the other things that you have to understand is UPSC will not tell you how many points to write. I've told this earlier as well. While writing an answer, if you only remember three points or four points, only write that much. Don't dilute it just by expanding it to six, seven, eight points. It will not leave a very good impression with the examiner. If you think the more I write, the better marks I will get, that is not always true. if you can make your point in four substantial points that is good enough don't expand it to 5 6 7 because they are not asking you in question write five points about this write seven points about this they're just asking you what are the measures that can be taken so it depends upon you how you want to expand don't spread yourself too thin just because you want to increase the number of points that will not help you out then the concluding part concluding argument here See you cannot write a way forward here because you have already written the way forward in the main body way forward are usually suggestions that you write so in this case a suggestion part is already in the main body where you talked about what are the measures to be taken so in the conclusion part you can't really repeat that you just have to summarize that for example the government should follow a multi pronged approach of government policies education institutions etc civil society private sector coming up now it's something very interesting there are certain keywords that you should try and use as much as possible in the mains answer writing it gives you a very matured look in your answer i'll give you some example like this phrase government should use a multi pronged approach trust me this is applicable to 10 different questions for example let's say there's a question about how the government can improve its relationship with the neighboring countries like pakistan sri lanka bangladesh etc in the concluding argument you can write government of india should use a multi pronged approach and involve as many as many different stakeholders as possible so the concluding part are very generic these phrases if you try and inculcate them in your answer writing it will make your answer much easier and much attractive to read so multi pronged approach involving all stakeholders try and explore synergies these are some of those phrases which are very mature and they look very good on paper as well now i don't mean to say in each of the 20 questions write the same thing examiner will understand but you can just spread it across here and there because when you read when you write these kind of words like government should have uh, should ensure sustainable efforts these are those kind of keywords that you keep on finding in every single answer the more you practice the more you will be able to ensure that they fit into your answer don't just push it where it is not uh, ideal but if you practice more you will be able to use these keywords more which will give you a much better answer now time for your homework for the day it's a tough question based on current affairs that is discuss the role of competition commission of india in containing the abuse of dominant position by multinational corporation in india it's a tough question if you don't know about this it will be difficult for you to answer so if you don't know about this don't worry just search on this as i tell you if you have to write the answer you're just starting answer writing practice you don't have content don't pressurize yourself do a google search take help online get the content but then write in your own language as long as you able to do that you are in safe and so read about competition commission of india the fines that they have imposed for example on google for its activity for its dominant position see how it works and you will be able to answer this question much 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 better 
What do you have to do after you have written your answer? You can mail it to me here and I'll be happy to check it, give you feedback. I hope you learned something new. Once again, hit the subscribe button, take advantage of all the other initiatives running. Right now, there's a quick revision course for the prelims exam. And also I had started a course specifically for PSIR, decoding PSIR through answer writing, where we decode important topics of PSI and write answers on them. Thank you so much. Have a good day ahead. Bye-bye. Jai Hind.